for the first, first part of this session, we'll have our speakers uh, introduce themselves and go over the content that they have prepared for you. And then at the, the second half, we'll go over questions that you have submitted, some Q&A. Um, and other than that, just ask that, you know, we keep this a safe space, a respectful space to talk about some of this stuff. If you have ideas um, or things that you have done to pivot, to shift to this new um, virtual digital uh, way of doing things and uh, if you've been successful if the things that you think you would like to share we invite you to share just let us know in the chat for any other questions clarification go ahead and use the chat as well so um, without further ado i will turn things over to our speakers for their introductions cool hi i'm glenna fultano i am the midwest district vice president and i am going to be talking a lot today about like how to make and use Google Classroom, not the specific Kappa One, just in general, because it's a really good resource to use this year. Um, you guys might be like, why are you teaching this? I'm a certified Google educator. I'm an education major, and we had to get certified through my program. So I have like that. I don't know if that makes you feel like I know what I'm talking about a little bit more. <laughs> so yeah. Hey, everyone. I am Anthony Gooden. I am the Southeast District Vice President of Membership. And I'm a fall 2017 initiate of the new new chapter at the University of Alabama and as always roll tide uh, today, my focus will be more on how to get your KKSI email if you don't have one already and how to get into the Kappa Kappa Psi VPN uh, Google Classroom and just going over what it looks like and how to actually access that. So Cool. I, I think that's all for introductions. So we'll jump right in. Anthony will start and he'll talk about more of like the specific cap cap size side of things. And then I will take you through like how to make a whole classroom and all that for this year. So sorry if you're in my district, this is going to be kind of similar to what we did at our chapter or district training for me. <laughs> Same with the Southeast, but you know what? It's never a bad thing to review this information multiple times. We're recording for the entire nation of the Brotherhood, and I appreciate you all. Much love. Thank you. Bye. All right, everyone. So get to the Google Classroom. Um, you're going to go to the Cap Kappa Psi website it's, uh, itself. And here in the membership tab, you'll have sign up for a kkpsi.org email. And the process itself is very self-explanatory. Um, your name, date of birth, your cell phone, your chapter designation, um, when you were initiated, the different statuses we have, um, your instrument, permanent address, current address. This is important. Use an email address that you check often because that is how you will find out about the status of your KKSI email. Um, I've seen it happen uh, <laughs> where sometimes we forget to check our emails. So, and then what you would like your uh, specific email. Now, when you're making a KKSI email for your chapter, it cannot be officer specific. So it can't be, for example, new new vpm at kksi.org it has to be for your chapter if it's going to be a kksi.org email or if you're going to create a personal one that is all on you um, so when i did this out this is what i had requested easy for me to remember um, super super easy so now once you have gotten your email back about uh, the confirmation of your Kappa Kappa Psi email. To actually access the Google Classroom, you will go to the Road to Wisdom page. Go to our lovely VPM tab and access to Google Classroom. Again, this is important. Once you have that email, you need to email curriculum at kkpsi.org with what your kksi.org email is, and that will get you access 
to our Google Classroom, which I will now show us. So when you go into it, you first load it, there'll be a picture of Tammy Ramsey right here in the left-hand corner. She is on the curriculum committee. And you'll click it and it'll bring you in here. So one thing I love about the Cap Capsi Google Classroom is it's kind of like a blog spot or Facebook for the VPNs. Um, as you can see here on the 15th of June, Derek reached out to VPMs about wanting to do a teaching tips video. Um, if you scroll through, you'll see people asking questions, you know, with the fall plans coming out for universities, what are some good ideas, changing the recruitment process that your chapter normally does to fit pivot guidelines and your university guidelines. Um, so it's very interactive. And that's basically the Kappa Kappa Psi Google Classroom. Glenna is going to show you the more fun stuff if you are going to use Google Classroom with your MCs and your chapter. Does anyone have any questions for me before I turn it over to Glenna? All right, if not, I will stop my screen share and hand it over to Glenna. Cool, all right. Hello again, everyone. My part's probably gonna be a little bit longer. It'll be helpful to follow along if you're wanting to use Google Classroom just because I feel like when you see it and do it at the same time, it's really helpful. So I will start sharing with you all. Um, when you're making a Google Classroom, if you're wanting to use it for your membership candidate class at whatever point this year, the one thing is you can't do it through a KKSI email because with the domain, they have to have ones also. So you'll want to do it through your personal email account, which kind of stinks. If you all have the same like school domain, you should be able to do it through that also if it's if it gives you access to Google. But I will show you how to make one. I'm using my personal account. I have two in here. I have my class one from last year because I used this last year in my um, membership candidate class, even though we were in person, I used it to keep track of everything. Then I have one from all my VPM training stuff. So this is what the home screen for Google Classroom looks like. You'll just look up Google Classroom and it'll pop up. Um, and usually it'll be a blank screen if you have nothing in there and that's good. What you'll wanna do is hit this plus sign in the top corner if you're making a new one and you'll hit create class. If your membership candidates are wanting to join your class, they will hit join class, but you'll hit create if you are making one. And then this pretty much just certifies like you're not doing this through a school or whatever and that you're not a real teacher, which I'm not, I'm not doing it for school, it's for Kappa. So then you put your class name. So it'll be fake class because that's what this is. Also, I can't spell to save my life. So if I spell things wrong, just please don't make fun of me. <laughs> but yeah, so you'll make your class and my Wi-Fi is really bad here at school. So this might take a second, there we go. Then it makes your like home page with nothing in it. Um, one thing I like is you can change the theme and there's like a little music theme one and that's the one I like to use for Kappa stuff. Um, I think it's an arts. Yeah, there's this little purple guy and he has music on him and I think it's fun and good for Kappa because it has music and it's fun. But up here you have this thing called a class code. That's how people will join your class. Um, you can send out the code to everyone and it just, you can copy and paste it and just put it in whatever and send it. Or you can invite people through email and I'll show you how to do that in a second. But you can just copy this or the invite link also you can do, but people can just join. They go to the plus join class and they put in this um, class code and then they should be in it. And if it doesn't let them for whatever reason, the first thing I've been trying recently is saying, do you have a different email account you can use to join it? Because sometimes those domain things are really weird and they get in the way of stuff with school domains and Kappa domains. Those are the two that have been in the way recently when I've been trying to make these. This is your homepage though. It'll show you just all of your kind of stuff, but it's kind of cluttered. My like go-to place that I go is the classwork section because this is all organized when you have it all set up and it looks really nice. You can put all kinds of stuff in here. I will pull on another, um, 
my other one so I can show you what it looks like at the end just so you see like a full product. So my VPM class, I use this for um, my vice president training stuff uh, with my district, but I have it all organized and sectioned off. So I have documents, like important just document things. I have our officer training presentation stuff, and then I have things about recruitment that are separate from that. So you can put them into sections and put different kinds of materials and links in there. So I'll show you how to do all that, but this is what it kind of looks like when it's all set up and the stream section just has all of it like listed. So it's helpful to find what's most recent, but it's not super helpful all the time if you're trying to look for specific stuff. So classwork is where I always go right away. It links everything you do to Google Calendar, which is really nice. So then it'll put it all in there for you. So it's all, I don't know, you can see due dates and things, but you probably won't have a lot of due dates for stuff, but that's okay. Um, to create anything, you hit the create button with Google products in general. If you wanna talk about Google products, I will talk about them forever, I love Google, but you just hit the plus button. In all their products, there's a plus button somewhere and it's usually big and colorful. So you'll hit create and you'll kind of choose what you wanna create. I'm gonna start with creating a topic. So if you're doing your membership candidate class, you'll probably have a section like um, your weekly, like Road to Wisdom slides. So then you'll do that, slides, and then you can create a topic. So then anytime that you have slides to add, you can put them in and add them under Road to Wisdom slides kind of thing. So then they stay in one space all together and you can move them around so they're in the right order too, which is really nice. So then we can hit create again and we can put something in our slide section. So I can go down here. I like to use materials most often because it's just kind of empty and you can add whatever you can. They all kind of do similar things, but with quizzes and assessments, it gives you a blank, blank Google form that you can do. So if you're wanting them to fill out a form, I would do a quiz or assessment and I'll show you how to do that too. But first you go into here and you title it whatever. So it's lesson one. Um, and then you can add like anything, something from your Google Drive. You can add a link from a website that you have. You can add files from your drive and computer, or you can add videos to it. I usually use the Google Drive thing or the link or the most common ones that I've used so far where I've put activities in through a link, but usually I just have my slides in here and it shows you your whole drive account and everything in there that you would want to like access. So then you can go through the different sections of stuff. So yeah, that's how you do all of that stuff. Um, and then you just add it. So if I wanted to add this one to it, I would insert and then it's on there. You can add multiple things. So if I want to add a link, um, I can put that in. So there's these things that you can just add into it. And then what you can do is there's no topic right now. So you can go in here and I can either create a new topic right now and then it'll add it like we did earlier, or I can put it underneath this Road to Wisdom Slides one and post it. And you post it, I usually do all students. I don't know, you might have a reason to post it to some, but if you have people in your class, it'll give you a list and you can assign it to just certain people if you're needing to send a form to just a couple people or something like that. But I usually just leave it at all students. If you have multiple classes that you're doing for whatever reason, I like could send it to all of the different classes I have. I don't need to, so I won't, but put it in there and then you post it. If you want it to post at a certain time, then you can schedule it to post. So I can go in here to schedule and then you just put your date and time that you want it to post at. So that is how to do like posting things in here basics. I can go through it all again. I probably will go through one more with like a quiz. Do we have questions at this point of what's going on in here? I know I go kind of fast sometimes. <laughs> cool. Um, I'm going to go through it one more time with just a different thing that you can add. So I'm going to do a quiz assignment. So the only thing that's different in here is it has a grading scale, but um, you can just make it ungraded if you want to do like 100 points and do that, whatever. You can put due dates on stuff. Um, I think I had due dates on the like membership candidate project that they did, the like Road to Wisdom end of it project thing, portfolio project. I don't know why I couldn't think of that word. I had like a date and time for that because I wanted it in so I could like 
make the presentation stuff I needed to with it. Um, but that's something that you can do with that. Not necessary though, but it gives you a blank quiz when you do the quiz option. That's the only difference really. And then you can go in and make forms and quizzes about whatever you need to if you're wanting to just like see how they're doing with knowledge for road to the road to wisdom then you can do something like that and it could be like fun and you can insert videos and things in here and pictures that can be a fun way to like get things interactive and make it easier to see like people have questions sometimes i just do a questions form where i put questions up here and then i go in and i choose like short answer and i just put do you have any questions and i put like three of those and send it out so people can and kind of ask questions that they might not want to ask in person, things like that. Um, again, if you want to talk about all the Google stuff, you can totally contact me and I will help you with it. But that's how that works. Another cool thing is that you can put it into a spreadsheet when you get answers from your quiz. So you just click this button and hit create new spreadsheet and you title it whatever your uh, quiz is and then you create it and then it'll take you and make it a spreadsheet so it's all in one place opposed to the responses where it's kind of listed out and it's a little hard to read sometimes depending on what the topic is and answers are. So yeah, and again, I can go in here and this one, I if I don't want this in a topic, I can go and I can leave it at no topic and then I need to title it something quiz and then I can assign it and then it's in there. So that's like, the gist of it, if you're wanting to add people to, you can add other teachers. So if you have like an education chair or something like that in your chapter that helps with the Road to Wisdom stuff, you can add them. Or if you have other people presenting throughout, you can add them as a teacher. So then they have access to post things, uh, which is really nice. So then it doesn't all have to like be sent to you, then posted in there. You can just have them post it right away. Um, and then to add people, you just go in and you put it in an email account of someone to add so and then you send it out and it'll hit invite and then you'll click it and you can send it. so that's I believe everything I know I went kind of quick I can kind of show you all what I had last year for my class when I did my membership candidate class but if you have any questions about stuff for Google Classroom and how to use it for membership candidate things. We're also using it for our appointed positions to kind of keep track of their um, functions and stuff, whatever they're doing with those. So that's another thing you can use it for. There's all kinds of things you can put it into, but that's what we've thought of with my chapter. But this is my class from last year and how I kind of split it up. Um, I had activities that we did, anything they interacted with, I put on here um, documents, that they just needed to look at and weren't doing anything with were up here and then lesson slides I put all in one place. So that's what I used it for. I used it for them to turn in all their portfolio projects. Um, and I just like copy and pasted the meaning and what it's for from the road to wisdom. And then you can go in here and I deleted everything out of it earlier, but it was all like they had turned everything in and I had copies of all their projects in one spot, which was really nice um, to see. But then there's the instructions and stuff like that. And they can add comments. One of them made a YouTube video kind of thing. So should I just put it in there? So there's all kinds of things you can do with it. There's a lot of fun, just ways to make it, I don't know, your own classroom and do what you want with it. So yeah, I think that's about it. So. Right. Awesome. Thank you, Glenna. Thank you, Anthony, for um, taking us through how to go about this. So um, I'll go ahead and open up the floor for any general questions regarding Google Classrooms. Anything. Okay. If you think of anything, please let us know. Um, again, we'll go into your questions that you've submitted, but I did want to ask, um, just open it up to the entire group here. As you were all transitioning to online learning, what are some of the negatives or the cons that you have experienced yourself as the student? Go ahead, Anna. It's like harder to connect with people and it's harder to have like kind of a side conversations, you know, if we were like using Peter lingo. Uh, <laughs> Um, that it's it's always you can't like do that sort of thing on zoom because then everyone's cross talking and doesn't work um, so it's like and it's also a lot of the brothers in recruitment 
we've been talking about in our chapter, like, oh dear God, we don't know these children. We don't see them nearly as often, you know, like, what do we do with this? <laughs> Not yeah. children, but freshmen, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Great, thank you for sharing, Hannah. Uh, Susan. Uh, it's really hard to make relationships with uh, the little ones, the, um, the membership candidates, or even with the active brothers, if you have like transfer brothers as well. Mm -hmm. okay. And also with, oh, sorry, sorry. Go ahead, go ahead. Um, I was thinking of something else. Uh, with everything being online, we also do risk of everything being leaked mm -hmm. or anything being leaked out. Okay. Yeah, great. No, thank you so much for sharing. So um, Hannah had mentioned having those um, conversations and making those connections, which uh, ties into what Susan had mentioned about making connections and the fear of um, the information, the content leaking out. So what else? I wanted to um, hear, hopefully from everybody, just from your personal experience, as you are shifting to online learning, what are some of the hard, the, the hard parts, the difficulties, the negatives, the cons that you are, you have experienced? Um, I will say something on this. I, it's end of the first week of classes and I just finished all my schoolwork and Eileen just said it in the chat. I feel like I am so alone because I don't know anyone in my classes and we did this asynchronous first week thing where they just sent us stuff to do all week and it was due at the end of the week for everything because they couldn't put a due date like during the week and we didn't have any zoom meetings so they were just like here read 25 pages about teaching literacy to children and i was like okay i guess and then i had to take quizzes it's very overwhelming to do online sometimes because it can seem like you're being bombarded with just everything at once kind of thing sure I definitely appreciate that. Thank you. Um, no practice room jam sessions. That's very true. That's very true. Maybe by yourself. Um, what else? What other hardships have you faced, have you dealt with as you yourself as students are to have transitioned to online learning? It's easy to get behind. Okay. Thank you, Kurt. If um, you're like, oh, sorry, Bong, go ahead. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. I was going to say, if you're like me and you're very easily distracted and so you have a computer in front of you, um, especially if you're an iPhone user like me and your text messages pop up on your laptop mm -hmm. while you're in middle of class or you're trying to read or do an assignment or even if you make sure that you're in a as distraction free space as possible. It's still very easily to be dis easy to be distracted, even if no matter what's going on. So that's something I've struggled with a lot. Sure, I mean myself included. So I, I feel you. I've checked my phone. I think at least thirty times, or my watch thirty times have, since you started speaking. So um, I definitely get that. All right, uh, Jennifer had mentioned attendance. People not showing up to anything makes it difficult to learn as a group. Yeah, I think that's a very valid point. Uh, let's see. Uh, mostly when the teacher's phone goes off and you look at yours. <laughs> True. <laughs> All right. What else? I mean, kind of what Anthony was saying with background distractions. I live with my three best friends. So it's like constant like, hey, what have we thought about this? What are we doing? Are people yeah. having fun? But we're always like in and out of all of the rooms and common spaces. So it's difficult to stay focused a lot of the time with that. Mm -hmm. I think focus is the main thing that is taken away because you're not in a specific like learning setting. It's like, this is also where I live. Mm -hmm. So. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'll take a couple more. What else? Uh, sometimes the service is bad and you have a hard time trying to, yeah, trying to hear the instructor. That's very real. People not interacting and paying attention. Okay. Cool. Okay. So with that being said, you know, with that list of struggles and hardships, I'm assuming that can most likely will translate over to your membership class going through uh, membership education, wouldn't you say? So that, with that being said, um, let's kind of open up the, the, um, the floor for suggestions or what you have seen or have tried to overcome some of those struggles. So for, for, for example, for me, uh, if I know that I have, I have to like, I have to pay attention to this because this will affect my 
literal job, then I know I need to take off my watch. Because I know to me, that's like one of the biggest things. So that's a small step, but that, that's a thing right there. And I turn off my notifications on my, on, my, um, on my Mac. So that's just like, you know, it could be something as simple as that to something major. So I wanted to open up the floor for people to share thoughts, ideas, or things that they've tried. Uh, my favorite professor at UNO, she teaches like collaborative piano and keyboard and all that. Um, mm -hmm. I've been helping her test out things over the summer on like, how the hell do we teach piano online? Um, so yeah. she's been like after us about like, guys, you cannot stay on some, the same thing for 15 minutes. Like in person, yes, but like you're going to lose people. Facebook is right there, you know? Yeah. Um, and sure enough, so like when she actually like teaches lessons to us, you know, it's like through each thing. Um, and then we like circle back to things if we have to or whatever, if we don't get through them in like seven minutes. But mm -hmm. she gives us a lot of time to like, um, a lot of different things that we can do over the course of the lesson so we don't like totally lose focus. Mm -hmm. Okay, I think that's very cool. Um, Susan says, I will hide my phone in another room. I mean, sometimes you just gotta do what you gotta do, right? If it means hiding in another room, I get it. Um, I met with somebody who, um, because they were so easily distracted, they said, I, I literally hide in the closet to do my Zoom calls. And they got a ring light and all that. So I get that. Um, I keep about 15 different fidget objects nearby to make sure my hands are always busy. Yeah, totally get that. And you know, like, there's some people who I can't sit still for very long. So I, I you know, have the, the privilege of getting a stand-up desk so, like, I can, you know, fidget and do this and you know, be able to interact and, and be a little bit more engaged. So what else? Let's, let's shift from, from the distraction part. Let's shift from that to the connection piece. How have you been making connections or how have you seen other people make connections online? I know a lot of people hate the traditional icebreakers. Mm -hmm. like, What's your name? What's your major? Where are you from? What's a fun fact? Um, I'm being honest. If someone tells me to tell them a fun fact without me having at least three to five business days to think of it, I'm not going to come up with a good one. So trying to change up those icebreakers um, that spark a little bit more creative thinking in the moment. Mm -hmm. Like when you were doing um, the podcast interview with Megan and I, and we were doing those uh, just that rapid round of questions. You gave us no time to think. Like, if you have to be a Disney princess, who would you be? No explanations, just who would you be? You know, something quick to make people, still make it fun and less, oh no, it's another name, age, fun fact, major, hometown kind of thing. Okay, I, get, I, I definitely like that. Changing it up, making it different. What else? Most people really like to meme up any form of group chat. Hey, I like it. Um, I'm a physical learner, so it's hard to get access to your professor in good timing to resolve a problem. Um, could you, could you um, elaborate on that a little bit more? I wanna make sure I understand the question. Is it Dazen? That's okay. Um, so I will come back to that if, if you would like to jump in and explain. Um, let's see. Oh, okay, okay, I see. Um, and answer to your question, I'm a physical learner and it's hard to get access to your professor in good timing to resolve a problem. Okay, I see, very good. All right, so when it comes to connecting with others, um, so let's, let's shift from that then. When you, have there been any good examples of your online classes so far, when, since COVID has started, that you have found like, this was a, a good example of how to teach something or how to engage uh, a group in a lesson. Um, I know I had a, sorry. <laughs> I had a professor um, this week actually, who took the time to acknowledge that not everyone might feel comfortable or safe turning on their camera. Um, and she was like, look, if you want to use a virtual background, please do. Just mm -hmm. make sure it's not distracting and it's not anything that might be questionable. But for me, that, that hit home because I know a lot of people who might not feel safe, you know, revealing their location sure. or if they're going through something, you know, having that safety in a virtual classroom. 
Um, and even though we've only had that class one day this, uh, this semester so far, mm -hmm. I know that affected a lot of people positively. Okay. So yeah, I, I appreciate you sharing that. I mean, that could be really something to, to kind of make a note of because sometimes we, we forget, we, you know, if we are feeling comfortable or that's something that, that we don't fear, maybe that's something we forget. So maybe that's a good thing to make a note of to remind people consistently like, hey, it's okay to not have your camera on or such. So um, giving people that grace. Hannah, I think you had your hand up as well. Yeah, that same professor I mentioned earlier, she had us, um, she pulled up like MS Paint or something on her computer and had us use the annotate feature on Zoom to like, draw answers to questions so it was like show me a face of how you're feeling today so some people like you're just two lines and then a line across or whatever um yeah, and yeah. then it was like what's your favorite color and you have to write it in your favorite color and like you, we would use that to mark up scores and stuff but it was a really nice way to just spend five minutes and like check in with people and be honest about it you know mm -hmm. and it was hilarious because people's stick, stick figures were adorable so yeah yeah okay i appreciate that what else um for one of my classes we just for like introductions, I think doing something a little different is always fun. And although sometimes it's like, oh, read them all, comment on two people's, I think that it actually helps. She was like, read all of them, comment on everyone's. And it kind of sucks because you're like, that's a lot of time. But we did these cool things. I'm going to screen share um, this guy called like Satori timelines. And you can like put all these pictures and things and words and everything just from stuff so it's like a little bit different and you can put like quiz questions on there yeah. and stuff like that so there are fun things that you had to be interactive with a little bit more um than just doing a regular like this is me kind of thing so we did that and we had to comment and then and it got a lot of questions and things going about like oh where are you from there's a girl in my class from california and i'm from oregon and i was like oh my gosh that's crazy west coast kind of thing so I think actually like taking the time to focus on what other people's things are and not just like filling it out for the assignment of like, yeah, I have to comment on people's. I think that really helped. She was like, actually have real conversations or you're not getting the grade, which kind of sucks. But then we realized like, it's fun to go through and actually see everyone's and you get to see people's pets and stuff like that. So just having fun with it, not being so stressed, I think is a good thing to like, remember, like everyone's kind of worried right now but taking a breath and just being like well everyone's doing the same thing so might as well kind of put everything into it type deal yeah great i appreciate that so with that being said um looking at how to engage and how to teach online how to teach virtually um i by no means am an expert um i just take notes and pick up what other people find successful so um, and this you know feel free to answer uh, we're not going to judge we know that there's a lot going on but who is actually taking the time to go through the uh, road to wisdom manual okay very good um, okay so with that being said can someone tell me the theme other than the fact that it's the road to wisdom for all the lessons what is what is a theme that stands out? Your blank matters, or our blank matters. Right. So when it comes to matters, we're we're sharing with with our prospective members or our membership candidates that this is something that is important to us. And I think the the big gap is how can we make it important to them. So I'm going to ask that question to the group. When it comes to each lesson, how can you make it important to lessons? So let's go with like. For example, lesson two, our service matters. How do we how do we go about sharing that, that this is something that matters to to should matter to an MC as well? Any thoughts? I would definitely say showcasing what your chapter has done. You know, bring it beyond just the words on the page. Yes, service matters. Yes, we should find it important. But we can't show them that we believe it's important if we don't show them our acts that we've done. Granted, we shouldn't be doing the service for the thanks. But just being like, look, we take service seriously. We love doing service. You know, this is, this is what our chapter has done. For example, my chapter, it was a fundraiser, but it also was a service project. We've done a pie asai. Um, and you know, we're like, all the money donated is gonna go straight back into the marching band program. 
-hmm. So some of our grad students are honoraries. Um, some of more of our grad students were undergrads and then just stayed in the school of music. Mm -hmm. um, I know myself, I have been on that list to Pi because I'm a section leader and in Psy. So like, it's, yes, it's a good quick way to generate fun revenue if you can get it approved like we're supposed to, but also, you know, showing that service isn't just seeing how quickly we can set up the band space. Mm -hmm. You know, there's other ways to do service that aren't manual labor. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and let, let me read Jennifer's here. Um, show what we do because most of our band notices that we only do one or two things when we do so much. Also show them that uh, they can do service how they want and can do a service project that they want to do or interests them and isn't just something we want them to do. So I think that's very powerful. And again, really looking at the fact that how are we looking at our MCs? Because I, in this, this may be a hot take, but I understand traditions are important and I understand a lot of times we do the same things over and over again because it's, it's comfortable and it's easy. But we really look at what, where we are right now and are we taking the things that we need them to do, the, the end goal, point B, are we matching what we need them to do um, with how we want them to do it or are we matching it with their skill sets? With that being said, if you want to achieve that, how are you in your chapter getting to know the MCs to see what they bring to the table? I don't know the answer because I'm sure chapters do things differently. So I want to ask, like, how are you, how have you gotten to know your MCs, Glenna? I mean, when we even, like, the second um, lesson is about, it's all about service and stuff. So that's when we choose our, like, MC service project and stuff um, that they're going to do. And something that we just did is, what have you noticed around the music building that drives you crazy? Like things that where it has to be really personal where then they like bring things up that can be big service projects. Like, like when you go in the practice rooms, it's like being in a jail cell. How can we fix that in any way? So then we talk about like, well, could we do service where we put like art in there or all the stands on third floor are squeaky or they don't stand up or some of them do this. So then it helps us to kind of brainstorm and kind of get to know like what their experience is with the building and music in general or sometimes they'll bring up like things with marching bands that have happened stuff like that where people have to actually think about like what have they personally been like driven bonkers by one of the service projects we did was literally sitting and scraping gum off all of the chairs in the music building and it was disgusting but it was like the best class bonding I've ever seen, not that I've seen a lot, I'm only going to be a junior, but I was like, this is great, because we were all like, that was terrible, but it was good, and it actually, like, did something, because no one wants to pick up a chair and have gum all over it, so things like that, where things that actually, like, they've noticed and actually kind of bother them, and what we can do to change it, so then to kind of also combat the, like, a lot of times we complain about a lot of things, but how can we actually fix it rather than just complaining? and letting it go, how can we like actually take action to make it better? Yeah, thank you for sharing, I appreciate it. Aileen, did you have something? Um, so one thing we do, I'm sorry if like I have to suddenly mute because Ellie is looking out the window and there's cats like running around, so. Um, but one thing we do before we start um, like the lesson, we, or like any lesson, we ask like why why does this matter before we like go into the lesson? So uh, the example we're using is service. Um, what does service look like to you? A community service. And then we start breaking it down to like, what a service to like the music department look like to the band program? Like, how do you want to serve? And then we get their perspective and then we bring in like active brothers who are attending those lessons. Okay, what does service uh, mean for, this brother um, who has been in the fraternity and and like got like both sides and then like we dive into the lesson so it's just like getting like a full understanding of like what service is um, yeah. inside and outside of Kappa Kappa Psi. Mm -hmm. Okay awesome thank you and Kat says same emotional bonding colon cleaning Susan's at the end of the marching season god bless that's nothing you know I love service but I don't like to touch our Susan's so um, other side of the coin, 
car bash. Oh, is that where you literally bash a car? Yeah, oh my, okay. I've never done one. I would love to participate someday, so please invite me. Um, so with that being said, you know, as, as uh, someone touched on this earlier, and I'm, I'm curious to know of those who are, who are studying education, is that a lot of times, obviously, we have this barrier that you're on the screen, you're on this box, that do you, should you go immediately into the lesson? How should you go about essentially priming them for that conversation? Is it something you send out beforehand? Right, so I think Glenn had mentioned earlier something about having everything sent at once and it's overbearing, it's overwhelming. So like, is it like a, an activity or a prompt to write on to think about beforehand? Is it getting a guest speaker? Is it collaborating? Like, what are some things in which you could take that first step into just starting that lesson? Um, okay, everyone's talking about the car bash in the comments, sorry. Um, I mean, jumping into starting lessons, I feel like it's really helpful to kind of jump in and do something fun right away. We talk about, I'll do a little education for you people who aren't education majors. We talk about engage is the first step. There's like these five E's, it's this whole list, but engage is the first step. You have to get people like on board with what you're teaching and like they have to believe what you're telling them. So you have to engage them so they're actually listening to you. So that's the first step is just like doing something that you know is exciting, starting with like the definition of service is this, like that's kind of boring sometimes. So starting with something fun and making it less stressful right off the bat. So then it's not like, cool, here's everything stress for the whole class. So then they start really fun and excited. And then it kind of gets harder as you go is helpful. Mm -hmm. So with that being said, I, I definitely, oh, did someone have something else to share before I seeing none? Um, so with that being said, let's say that engage, we want to engage them how that, that's that first step. So I want to ask you this, let's say there are those five E's, right? That's that first step is, is engaging them. So my question for you is when you're teaching a lesson, is it the same digitally? Should we teach it all in one session and then just move on to the next one? Or is that something that we should break up since it's digital? We should break that up. Thoughts? I know I personally at this point would say, try and break it up. Um, because I know a lot of chapters only meet once a week for their MC lessons. But if we're doing it virtually, you have that opportunity to kind of spread it out. So that way, like Glenna said, we're not overwhelming people right from the get go, especially if they're one of those people who come to college thinking, I will never join a Greek organization, but yet they find themselves, you know, going through the MC and education process of Kappa Kappa Psi. Mm -hmm. So finding ways to break it down to not overwhelm them while still keeping them engaged instead of, all right, we're going to spend three hours on Zoom today talking about fraternity leadership and the online membership and reporting system. Yeah. So, I mean, uh, for the district officer on this call, you, you remember NLC, like those type of things are so great when they're in person because you kind of catch more because you're in the area and you're kind of like, essentially forced to do so um and you kind of have to show up right but digitally like it is so easy to disengage that way so again i'm not an educator i know nothing about this um so glenna thoughts i found the like whole 5e thing so i'll show you all and it helps break it up also is what like makes me like it so much so you start with engaging and it's for science is what I know it from, but it's helpful for almost any lesson. So people are on board and then you have them explore on their own and figure out what their connection is to it. And then it gets them more interested in it, whoever you're teaching, whatever you're teaching. And I can like copy this and send this to Fong to put with all this stuff so you guys can see it if you want it. Um, and then you explain. So you've let them have fun and figure out their connection to something in this lesson and topic. And then you explain it and then it takes the boring part and puts it at the end when they're already engaged in it. So then now they want to know what the actual point of it is because they've seen it in their lives. So why 
do they want to know more? So that's that. And then elaborate and evaluate are things that you want to have happen usually further on. So you do these three first ones mainly, and then elaborate is something where you have them like next time we'll come back and talk about this after you've observed it in your own life kind of thing. Um, so we did it in science. I know this isn't a great like for cap cap sci example, but we did it in science of like talking about how temperature changes throughout the day. And we had them then go home and explore like in their own like homes and yards and things like that, like where it's hotter and where it's colder, depending on things. And then they come back and they have more information because they've observed it in their life. So things like that, where then they can go and into their life and see what am I doing as service that I'm not realizing is even service. And in that hour class, it might be hard to think of everything, but then you go home and you might think, oh yeah, I did these things in high school. And that's why it matters to me that I continue doing that kind of thing. And then evaluate is kind of, you don't super need it. It's just like the final, like closing of it, making sure everyone's kind of on the same page with stuff. So then redoing that explain step of going through, cool, now that we've gone through this, making sure it all relates back to each other. So that's the five E lesson plan thing but I think it's really helpful I thought it was silly at first when I had to use it and I was like oh we'll just do it because we have to but it's actually super helpful in making an engaging class that like flows nicely mm -hmm. I appreciate that thank you so I mean just going off of that um, and I'll, I'll go to our chat comments here in just a second um, like let's say I'm just thinking off the top of my head if I look at that five model I feel like for me I would I would have that session that like whatever the online session is that meeting I would probably cover the first three and then have them maybe record a video explaining or just doing some sort of project on their own uh, obviously limiting it to a small amount to so make sure that it's not overwhelming for them and then from there maybe having maybe leveraging your bigs your 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 education committee to have that more elaboration that evaluations phase of it to kind of help them do some self discovery and self exploration Awesome. Okay. Thank you, Glenn. I appreciate it. <laughs> okay, so some of the comments here, let's see. Tarshay mentions, um, as a future educator, uh, hates when my professor or teachers uh, before college taught uh, by the book. I can read the book myself. I'll rather you make the lesson exciting um, and actually find a way for me to, be, uh, to get better understanding. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I can honestly say throughout high school, I did not read very much because I don't know, there was something about being forced to read something that it was it just, it wasn't enticing, right? So I, I think figuring people's whys and, and really focusing on how to get to know members. So as we're thinking about this, I think there is, there could be limitations to like, if you're a chapter that takes a large class, like, do you need to rethink that? to make sure that whatever class you do get, that size is manageable for you, your chapter, and your committee. Something to think about, right? Because what we don't want is to take a huge class, have people either feel disengaged, feel that they're not important, and they become um, those members that in the future start to create problems because they just were not fully engaged, right? And, and I'm sure you've seen DPMs and I'm sure you, you may have done this yourself with, and other aspects, but when there are people that are like excited, they're positive, they kind of raise your hand like, I'm ready to go, we're more likely to teach those individuals and give them more time, right? But then there are those who may be shy or who may not be so comfortable. And so looking at how we, we engage them. Um, Chris mentions um, he had a hybrid class even before COVID where uh, all the lectures were online and then class time were reserved for examples and discussion, which I found was effective for understanding material, but it was difficult to make sure all the material was at least read by everybody. Yeah, um, I was definitely one of those students that did not read the material. So fake it until you make it. Um, great. Okay, so let me go to some of the questions here that you had submitted beforehand. Um, let's see, what other what are some different types of media that can be used while doing the member process online? They mean like online applications or things like random stuff or actual things from like Kappa Kappa Psi to use. Do you know, or should we just talk let's, about all of that? I don't know. Let's go with the first one. Okay, um, I can give like a couple. I know they've been said in other 
things. There are a lot of websites, and I know that Jessica Lee listed a lot of them because she is a teacher, so she knows. But there's ones like Pear Deck where it's slides and they're interactive. So they're doing the slides along with you. And if you have a question, they like write on it and you can scroll through people's answers, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. I like things like, um, shoot, what's it called? There's ones where it's like a cork board or sticky notes and things like that where you can have people click on stuff and write their own answers and things like that, which are really fun to do. There's so many websites out there. If you look up anything about like educational tool for online learning, something will come up and it'll be helpful. You might have to dig through a few things and I can find stuff and send it to Wong about fun things that you can put into your classes, but there are a lot of things that you can add if you just kind of search a little bit online. And then to kind of add to that, for the less kind of serious side of things, um, if you are a VPM who likes to use, um, I believe it's called the reverse classroom, where like you have people go over the material beforehand, um, before the actual lesson, there's plenty of ways for people to be creative. Um, honestly, you can make TikToks interactive. You can have people do wet each other. Um, the great thing about the road to wisdom is that everything that is in the road to wisdom is able to be accessed by the public. So with road to wisdom stuff, none of that is secret. Anyone can find our road to wisdom. They don't need to put in a special password or anything like that. So for the people who fear, you know, well, what if secrets are getting out? If it's Road to Wisdom and stuff like that, that's perfectly okay. You just need to make sure, hey, when you're, if you're going to use an outlet like TikTok or another type of social media to kind of help create a fun, engaging response or activity, if they've already done a degree, make sure that they're not referencing the degree in that. But you, there are plenty of ways to still find interactive and engaging activities. Um, again, make sure you're getting these activities approved um, through the job form in the VPM tab on the national website. But, th you know, there's plenty of ways to keep things engaging and interactive without being as serious as a cork board. So with that being said, you know, I, I think it's really important that we as the, the people who are teaching and leading the membership process for the for the chapters is that sometimes I, I think we forget yes we have picked the best of the best to come in but they still haven't fully come into their own in the in, in the brotherhood in the chapter and many of us have not either right it's this ongoing cycle this process to learn and if I had to pick if I had to pick only one thing to focus on if I were VP, uh, VPM is how can I make that process for them in a way that they can actually process themselves. They can go through some self-discovery. They can go through like, you know, this is, you're essentially making them think through it rather than just doing the action, completing the assignment. So there are lots of obviously things to think about and there's ways to make things engaging. I since I, I really do believe that us as band kids have the, the uh, capacity, creative energies to make this work. But I also hope that we can be less rigid um, and start to move away from how things were done to try different things. Because at the end of the day, nationals, we're not teaching. District, we're not teaching. It's you at the chapter level that's teaching. So the more new things that you try, that you know isn't illegal and blah 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 you know we're not getting anybody in trouble trying new things and if it works well you share that with us that makes us stronger you can actually add to the road to wisdom and that could be something that is adopted so don't feel so rigid like oh i, I need to make this engaging based on how things were done there are many different ways and i encourage you to try different ways for example i know of a chapter that is I don't remember their name is actually, but they are trying to teach leadership and some of the lessons through Avatar, The Last Airbender. And they're showing examples of clips here and there and, and having people engage and having people kind of break down characters. And they're just doing that analysis, that thought process, that thinking. And that helps them 
ask, learn how to ask the right questions, learn how to notice certain traits, learn how to have those conversations. Um, and the last thing I'll, I'll mention here before we go to our, our last question is when it comes to your role, you're not alone. I know that's, that's so obvious to say, but you're not alone. You have your chapter. Hopefully you have a committee. If you don't, let your district officers know, let us know, we can help you start a committee. Leverage your bigs. Have a meeting with your bigs and let them know what the expectation is. How do you want to utilize them? Right, we also have our curriculum committee, our virtual education committee, people that you can bring in so that you don't have to teach a lesson. So they can help you go through this content. Right? Or maybe collaborate, maybe ask your district officers like, hey, you know, maybe we should do, if you could all can help lead lesson number one to kind of see how that goes. Think of new ways in which you can leverage other people because I think at the end of the day, this is gonna be very daunting if you take it all, if you take on all this on your own, okay? So my last question here that I have, <laughs> let's see. Let's just talk about burnout. I think that's just general, very common for any and all of us. Ways in which we can combat burnout or recover from burnout. Um, I can start on this little, I mean, a lot of us have probably already reached that point a little bit with classes from spring and all that. It's hard. Or long Zooms that you have had to do for whatever you're doing. A good way to like combat that a little bit might be to just take a break sometimes. I know that a lot of times we have these strict kind of class scheduled. We have to get through it. We have to like get it done in a certain amount of time. But try to allow for a little break in there because everyone's going to need it. We're all so stressed already and it's like week one for most of us maybe week two so I say just really allow for those breaks and even set up things where people can if they want to and hang out because I know for myself a lot of times I like to be able to just talk with people in those settings because I love people who are in Kappa but sometimes when we're only talking about Kappa it's like I don't want to do that it's not fun anymore because we've been doing this for hours but then it's nice to still see those people but just kind of chat and hang out as it is. So I think just doing stuff like that where you can just be kind of chill together and not have a strict schedule of things will help a lot. And making sure that you're taking care of yourself and like getting sleep and eating food and drinking water, things like that are going to help a lot. And remembering why you're doing it. We all remember why we wanted to join Kappa, and this will be specific for classes like this, or for school, why you wanted to do your major. And I think that helps a lot because I, for a little bit, was like, oh my gosh, I can't do these classes. And then I started thinking about, well, this is why I actually wanted to be a teacher. This is what I actually wanted to do with it. And it helps me kind of get through the hard parts because you know that you're going to get to a point where things are better than they are right now. Because it's hard to go through everything and be like, oh my gosh, teaching all these classes is taking everything out of me. But then remembering like at the end of it, we're going to have a new class of members in our chapter. And that's so cool. And they're going to be brothers and you like taught them and brought them into it. So it's really cool. So remembering the good things and why you wanted to do it in the first place, I think really, really help in the end. Yeah. Other thoughts? Uh, definitely. I, I definitely agree with Glenna. And to kind of add to it, I know earlier um, someone had brought up memeing in a group chat. Find that group of friends. They can be Kappa Kappa Psi related or not, but find that group of friends that you feel comfortable with when you feel the burnout. Um, have a group chat with them. Send memes to each other. Um, be like Glenna and Kat to some of the other VPMs and VPs. Did you drink water? Sometimes it's as easy as that. Just check on each other, you know, talk to your MC class. If you guys are doing a fall class, talk to them, be like, Hey, are you feeling burnout? Okay. If you're feeling burnt out, what can I do to help? What can your big do to help? You know, ask them what their needs are. Or if you have a good relationship with them already, because you've been in band together for two years, because you're a senior and they're, sophomores or juniors, you know, and you already have that pre-established relationship, just be like, did you drink water? Hey, here's a funny meme. Have a good day. Take a nap. You know, just check on each other. I think that helps a lot with the burnout as well. Yeah. I appreciate that. 
And I was really hoping, yeah, yeah like Tarsha had touched on this, I was hoping you would just share the fact that sometimes you just need to, you just need to get crazy with one another and just have fun, laugh, you know, sometimes you just need that. And I think at the end of the day, if, if these MCs feel connected to you, to the chapter in some way, shape or form, the learning will continue. The development will continue. It is not your job to make them the perfect brother. It is your job to help them engage, to help them learn how to ask the right questions, learn how to have the right conversations so that they can themselves strive to be that perfect brother. So I would say, again, if it really has anything, any worth, focus on the connection piece. And again, you don't have to do it all on your own. So I wanted to thank both of our speakers, Helena, Anthony, so much for your time, for taking the um, energy to prepare this and to showcase. Um, this call is being recorded, so once I render the video and upload it, I'll share the uh, link out with everybody. I encourage you all to spend some time and just take care of yourselves first, right? You cannot show up as your best self if you don't take care of yourself. So it's not selfish. Please just take care of yourself. Um, we will have uh, another VPM training uh, details to come on that. Um, but again, just a reminder, this is, this is not a, a one-time series. Uh, we will look into developing other VPM training in November and February, but we need your input. What are things that you want to learn about? What are things that you want clarity on? Because we cater this for you, not just to, not just to hear ourselves talk. All right, Glenn. Um, and I was just going to say, I mean, people have said like the VPs are crazy, but like reach out to us with things that you need help on because we're crazy because we just talk about like what we want to do and love doing all the time. So really reach out to us. We want to help everyone so much. We're always talking about, well, I just, I want to make sure everyone knows what's going on and they're all like comfortable and feel like they know what's happening. So really come talk to us. Like Everyone says that all the time, I know, but like seriously, talk to your district officers about things. They're there to help you. Like I wouldn't have ran for a district office if I didn't want to help everyone figure out their thing. I'm not just like, ah, I just want to be a district officer. That would be silly. Like all of us are here because we really, really want to help everyone figure stuff out. Even if you're not like your chapter's VPM, you can still talk to us about things if you have ideas or questions about literally anything. We will talk to you about it. We will help you or try our best to or send you to someone. So ask your district officers for help if you need it. I know it's scary to go to national officers sometimes. Ask us. We're students too. We're in the same boat as you. That's right. I'm scary. I own it. Um, so individually, we struggle and that's okay. But when you want to strive, let's come together. Let's work together. All right. So that's all that we have. If you have a moment, please Please thank our speakers. Please thank your district governors and counselors um, and councils for all that they do. Um, more details to come, but please take care of yourselves and wash those hands. All right. Bye, y'all.